<laughs> we're just, you know. We're the whole thing, right? Yes. How exciting was that to go on with AMC and uh, send it now? Yeah. For me, what, what is, is uh, huge is, is that I, I, I'm getting it too, because as an actor um, in something as big as this, and I mean, as you, you were saying earlier, if it was made into a film, you'd never have the time to create all these worlds. And that's a great thing that's happened with, with television. And, you know, it was, it was a wonderful thing to be part of that with Thrones, that yeah. could be part of a story that could, could grow over, over, over years, is that you often, as an actor, you, you just look after your bit in the story. Obviously, that's my, my job. But to be here today is to feel the whole thing and to feel the energy and the passion that it starts to, to bring up and that it's relating to people in a room. There's a lot of people in the room. I wasn't expecting that because it's a new show. I mean, I knew that the book had followers, but boy, you know, there's a lot of people there. And I, I've, had a real, I've got a real energy surge from this. Yeah. So I always say, I said, hopefully you're just sort of, you, can, you know, for the cast and the crew, I said, you know, you guys don't understand, there's a lot of people out there who are already in love with this, yeah. um, and who are ready for this, and, and it is, it's really, it was so exciting to get the news about Sundance, and the sun, being part of the Sundance family. I think yeah, Sundance yeah. Is, has stood so, for so long for a kind of independent vision, mm -hmm. and a, um, a commitment to telling stories that nobody else is telling, and I just that I feel like it's the perfect home for this project and that it, it will, um, you know, because we really did not fall into a lot of genre tropes. We were kind of, you know, fighting against that, you know, the fangs, the pale makeup, the whatever, you know, to make it. And, and a lot of networks, we've been like, could you make it a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Because it's worked before we were talking about, you know, there's yeah. a... We know this works. We're not sure if anybody's going to. Yeah. And, and so, but I think Sundance is, has such integrity um, in terms of that that I'm just I'm absolutely thrilled. Thrilled, thrilled, thrilled. I'll say I'm just thrilled, thrilled we could tell you. Because it's been like, oh, oh. I'd like to have a secret. Sorry. No. I like two parted on it. How long did you have to keep it a secret? Uh, do you have, when, did, when did they tell you? I got an email from Jane, the uh, great Jane Tranter, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
but that's what goes on in the world. And because he's, he's got a clear goal, and that main, you know, that's a populist. If you think about this thing about populism, it's often what unites people to a negative. And he's guilty of that. He, he is trying to unite his species against the vampires, or as he sees it, the oppression, because the they, they've lived 1500 years, they, you know, they go, go on uh, all day about it. That he is trying to unite people to, to fight that, to put it back. And that is a, a, a raison d'etre. And he realizes that his life is, you know, he, he's a man of a certain age. That to me was irresistible because I know that I'm going to be, all the work that I've put in, not everything will, because you haven't got time for everything, but you will manage to bring something together and the quintessence of that, of that man, will be pretty close while he's in this season, however long that may be, which is wonderful. He will be pretty close to the action. And so as an actor, you don't feel marginalized. Um, and, then, and then you just go, I'm in, you know, that's, you know, there's enough things tick now that I'm I'm just thrilled to be part of this. I think, yeah, I think one of the things that it was amazing on that in the trailer, the shop of the trailer, you could just see when he when he heard Diana Bishop's oh. name, oh. that the look in his eyes, chills, yeah, exactly. chills, and chills and because the was great too. oh my God. oh my goodness, mm. but just like that whole personal history of. Yeah. Yeah. For those who know the book, there's a huge. You could just see every. You could yeah. see that yeah. the, that that name triggered something in him. Yeah. That that made you suddenly want to know why he was the way he was. Exactly. And, how, and that's that's what you know. Again, sometimes the most interesting people that you meet in life are not the ones that you immediately <laughs> warm to and think I like you. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, it's the ones who have those layers that you mm, want to get mm. to know. So. Um, so yeah, no cartoonish villain for sure. No. And speaking no. of no cartoonish villain, and if, with, with how you just described kind of the experience of approaching Peter Knox, as you portrayed and adapted Peter Knox for television, did you find challenges and surprises, and what were maybe one or two of each? I think that the integrity of it was a surprise mm. that, it, that it that it bore that analysis. Um, and then my respect, you know, grew for the writer. That's, that journey started to happen. It was a bit of a surprise because you think, well, we need a negative person because that's <laughs> where you'll get the drama. You know, you've got your, you've got the person you want to root for that, that's going to survive against these odds. But we need those odds to be very, very strong, you know. And, and there is a lot of it about. It. There's a lot of strong arm politics going on. Like, like we've stripped away years of democracies going on. You know, I don't know. I don't want to go down any obvious routes here that people that come to mind that's going on right now. But well, well, we've got our own. You know, it's it's uh, it is a bit of a, a bit of a state of flux. Let's just say that at the moment. I hope, and it will it will come out. You know, the, 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 it'll go through a period of, of change. Um, yeah. So he. He surprised me, and what, one of the things that also really, at first I didn't like, and then I could, I did you know that this is a wonderful story, is that he's not as talented as the others. <laughs> <laughs> They're just so gifted. They give me, you know, she can do anything. And um, she beats me up just because she gets angry with me. And, and I don't know if we can use all this, but she invokes this thing called witch wind. And knowing that we had basically that the debit entrusted this series to people who had the wherewithal that's that's what i've experienced a lot in especially my earlier career is people sitting down and having great ideas but they just don't have just don't, don't have the budget to do it because time costs we haven't got the time to do it we need compromise 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 and it's like, what happened to that? You said it would be an incredible chase of life and death across continents. And it turns out to be a conversation in a pub. You know? What happened? So, yeah, um, I'm, I just feel more and more excited to be here today and you know, sharing this moment. Well, one of the things that's so in interesting and chilling for me as a historian is you have to remember, I wrote these books a decade ago. 
and I feel like in some ways they're more timely than they were when they were written. Mm -hmm. But as a historian, what I know is that any period of expansion, and we had expanded in all sorts of ways. There, you know, I wrote this in the shadow of the Prop 8 debate here in California about gay marriage, which was, you know, overturned. And people said, well, how, where is this coming from? I thought, oh, I, my little, all the little historian bells went off, and I thought, we're, we're about to enter into the, this, this drawing back phase. And so when I wrote this, you know, what's, what I find weird watching it now is I'm thinking, weirdly, this seems in chilling ways more relevant and more like on point politically than it yeah. might have seemed in 2011 when people first read it. How interesting. Um, yeah. So, because it, it's... Sorry, I don't mean no, to no, go. Um, you know, obviously, as an author, one of the biggest thrills can be seeing your vision come to life um, on screen. Yeah. Um, but we also know that there are things that we you know, tend to be very particular about. Was there anything that you were very firmly um, wanting to make sure stayed in the series, and something that maybe you gave? Them a little creative license for them and really was kind of surprised and pleasantly at how it turned out. Uh, good questions. Um, we had a lot of to kind of follow up on what Owen was saying, we had a lot of conversations about what we could do well and what we might want to leave to the reader's imagination. So there is a, a, a favorite scene of mine that is a, was about creature yoga, about what would happen if vampires, witches, and demons like were, were doing a peace project that involved yoga together. And I loved, the scene was daft, and I loved writing it, and people loved the scene, and it's like, oh, I love the scene. And when we sat down like to talk through what we were gonna do, we all looked at each other and thought, I mean, that, that could end badly, you know? And so we all kind of took a pinky pact, and it was a courageous one to say, if we can't, if we don't have the confidence to know we can do that well, let's just not do it. Let's leave that to the readers and the imagination. So on the one hand, I'm sorry to not see it, but on the other hand, I'm kind of like relieved we made that decision because then we could focus on doing other things like making the library. I was really, really worried about the Bodleian. When they said to me, we're gonna build the Bodleian in a studio, I just thought, okay, this has got disaster written on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 35 feet tall. <laughs> you can't rebuild the Bodleian. It was built in 1602. Are it's not going to work. Are they different other sets or anything? Or is it completely? They went in, they got permission to go in with like electronic measurers. They measured every inch of Duke Humphreys in the Seldonet. And they rebuilt it within, I believe, three inches. They ran, they were three inches short. And the, the keeper of rare book, the, the Bot Botley's librarian came to the set and walked in and went, and that's what I did. I mean, it was like, so I was like, why are we not going on location? The real reason was we could film on Sundays between like four and eight and only 25 people could be in the library at the same time that excluded the camera and the cast, the camera people and the cast. So it was impossible. There's, I mean, you think of this, yeah, yeah. your witch wind scene. How could we have ever done yeah, that? Yeah. So they're like, we're going to just build it. It's like, I mean, you can imagine somebody who's worked in there, you know, for most of her adult life, and I'm just thinking this is going to be horrible. And I walked in, and I said, and there was a wooden cube, and I said, that is a column base from Selden End. And they said, yeah, it is. And I said, I can tell you which column base that is, because I sat next to it for an entire year doing my just, I could tell from the grain of wood on the oak that they had simulated. So, so that was just like, I, I it was incredible now, that authenticity. Th there was another thing which is amazing, that James North, the production designer, uh, is a young guy, he looks very young, but he's a young guy. He, when the sets were done with, he has the ability to, to see in a set I think when he did this, they had to they have to strike the body and no matter he could see that those columns would be useful because they have a lot of it is set in Venice as well. That he would be able to have the artistic vision to look at something and lift it out of context, take it into another set and build a whole courtyard. So the, the congregation. Yeah. Incredible. So the volume columns got marbleized. 
and then put in the courtyard of the congregation set. So he was just, he was a genius. And, yeah. and so that's the kind of thing you, I, I have. Like, I can't, I can't hammer a nail. So there's no way for me to imagine that. But it was just, it was yeah. just breathtaking. And you would walk, I would literally, and when I walked on the set of the Bishop House, yeah, I just, yeah. I literally, I, I said, can I, I said, we should keep this on the soundstage and use it as an Airbnb. <laughs> oh, and there's another one, right? right I, I, I'm not sure you were there. Very early on in the story, there's a, a real super witch as well as oh, yeah. Maverick, she's rogue. Satu. Malin, Malin Yeah, and the discovery of where, is very early on in the show, of revealing where she lives. And there's a, there's a lake uh, in Wales, not that far from Cardiff, with pine trees, and, and you suddenly feel we're not in the UK now. We've gone much further north with Denmark. Going up, it, it could be that. It's like those pictures you see near the Arctic Circle. It's kind of a bit more barren with just these really strong trees. And they built a boathouse over over the water, and that's where she lives. This old rickety old thing. It, just looks it like is so Finland. fantastic. I couldn't. Yeah. I said, what are you going to do? They said, we've got to take it down. We have to leave. I said, you can't take this down. We want to it's live here. <laughs> it's incredible. I want to come here on holidays. <laughs> so sorry, guys. Just what was your favorite film or scene as an actor to film? It has to be Witch Wind. Yeah. I, I've thought about it, yeah, I've been asked this, yes. I, I don't want to spoil anything, but it has to be Witch Wind. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.